News alert. The Department of Justice has received congressional criminal referrals from a number of congressional Republicans. They want the Department of Justice to perhaps name a special counselor to look into that woman and any connections to Uranium One, the Clinton Foundation, and on and on. What do you think? I think that these matters should have been investigated a long time ago, but I don't think we need another independent counsel. Independent counsels are dangerous for two reasons. One, they are not accountable through the ordinary political chain of command to the attorney general and to the president. They operate on their own. Justice Scalia warned about this in a famous case in which he wrote the dissent saying you can't just delegate authority to some independent entity that answers to no one. Two, they often want to justify their existence. Are they going to spend eight or nine or ten or, or fifty million dollars and not indict somebody or are they going to indict somebody just to justify their existence and their expenditure? There's no reason that the Justice Department can't do this, but someone must do it because the apparent evidence of crime, emails, Clinton Foundation, and Uranium One, three different uh, cases, it is so apparent that there is evidence there, it begs for an investigation. But they, we've had it since Peter Schweitzer books published, right? We just have just a little bit more information. Why now? Is it because of the editorials yesterday? Nobody? Because Jeff Sessions is going to the Hill today. I'm sorry to say I think that's the reason it came out last night, because Jeff Sessions, without that announcement last night, was in a vice. He's got the Democrats on one side saying, what did you know about Russia, and when did you know it, and why didn't you tell Chuck Grassley and the Senate Judiciary Committee? And the Republicans saying, you know, if you really recommend it to the president that Jim Comey be fired because he dropped the ball on Hillary Clinton, pick up the ball, run with it, present the evidence against her to a grand jury. And by the way, what's going on with uh, Uranium One, and was the Clinton Foundation really authorized to collect tax-free dollars? It wasn't. At the time, it was collecting all those hundreds uh, mm -hmm. of millions. So in order to relieve some of the pressure on him, and, and because I think he believes he's doing the right thing. I mean, I say this as a friend of his, so it's a little difficult right. for me to criticize him. It would be like me criticizing you. How could you dare? Right. Uh, he, he has made a decision last night, which will take some of the right. heat off him and gratify the clamor of Republicans for the Justice Department to do something. Here's the other problem. There was an institutional reluctance in government to investigate your predecessors, yeah, Loretta Lynch and her DOJ, because you don't want your successors to investigate you. Right. I have condemned that institutional reluctance because the American public is entitled to know what the government is doing, what it has done, and prosecute those who have misused government authority. Yeah, you, because if we don't, this will set a precedence. If, if we don't stop this now, if something did go on illegally, then going forward, the DNC or Hillary Clinton, found whoever it is, can think they can get away with it. We were speaking at an engagement last Friday down in Florida. And we asked the crowd. We I said, what do you at, think? A, at a brewery. At a brewery. And the whole crowd, we said, do you think that the DNC should be held accountable if they did something wrong? And the whole crowd went crazy. Yes, 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 investigate. Because I said, some people have said, move on. They wanted to investigate it. So, Senator, we had Chuck Grassley on the show earlier, and he said it's not about politics. This is about finding out if something illegally ha illegal happened, we need to investigate. Listen to this. When I had a Democrat senator say, why are you interested in getting into uh, the, the Clinton email stuff and stuff of that nature? And uh, I said, it isn't about Clinton. It isn't about Trump and uh, uh, Russia. What all this is about is there political interference within the Justice Department? Is there political interference uh, in the FBI? That's the issue, and it doesn't matter whether there's political influence under Republican presidents or under Democrat presidents. It's the responsibility of the Judiciary Committee to investigate it. And 100 percent, I fully agree with him. But the Judiciary Committee can only investigate. It can't indict. Right. The Justice Department can present this evidence, whether, against, whether it's against Mrs. Clinton or, or anybody, to a grand right. jury and seek an indictment. Right. So that's an investigation with teeth. Judge, because it is a criminal referral that the Department of Justice received from congressional uh, members, is there a possibility somebody could go to jail over this stuff? Yes. Yes, there is a possibility somebody. Look, I've, many of us have been arguing for a couple of years now that there's more than enough evidence to have indicted Mrs. Clinton for espionage, the failure to safeguard state secrets that were given to her for, right. for safekeeping. Now it appears there's enough evidence to commence an investigation as to whether or not she was bribed, whether or not somebody paid $148 million, bundled that, 
and gave it to the Clinton Foundation in return for her vote to allow this right. group that did the bundling, to, which is Kremlin, con informant. Kremlin controlled. You can't make this up to own a part right. of an uranium mine. We have a huge agenda, so let's go to this, uh, something else, uh, Merge. The Atlantic was first reported last night uh, that Donald Trump Jr. received private messages from WikiLeaks Twitter account. Many people think from Julian Assange directly in a direct message on Twitter, uh, and they show some interaction there. When this came out, Don Jr. published the interactions, all they have. This was handed over the, to the Senate Judiciary uh, Committee to the, right. the investigation, and it's leaked out. How, how much of a problem is this for the Trump campaign? It's a problem that it leaked out, but if it's just communication, it is, is as uh, Greg Jarrett said last night, it is no crime to communicate with anybody about anything. This is America. You can talk to anybody about anything. However, if an agreement comes out of the conversation and you're running a federal uh, campaign and the agreement is to receive something of value from a foreign entity, then you have a problem. Right. WikiLeaks has been characterized by uh, Mike Pompeo, who runs the CIA, as not a, um, uh, not a, a legitimate uh, enterprise that looks for the truth, but a, an, an advocate that seeks to harm American interests. Right. I happen to like some of the stuff that they release because I think we need to know it, but they're adversarial with the government. All right. Uh, Let, let's talk about uh, one other thing that is uh, dominating the headlines. That is uh, the Roy Moore Republican candidate for Senate down in the great state of Alabama. More Republican senators are dropping their support. This is a big mess for the Republican Party down there. It is. The Republican Party is concerned about its relationship with women. And it may have to make the choice between being very, very pro-women and distancing itself from anybody as to whom serious and credible allegations have been made about inappropriate behavior, in some cases criminal, again, these are just allegations, mm -hmm. with women, and accepting a Democrat in his place, which gives Mitch McConnell a razor-thin 51 to 49 right. uh, majority in the Senate, or accepting this guy uh, in the Senate that nobody even wants to shake his hand. He ha if he steps aside, he doesn't leave the ballot, right? Correct. Could, but now you have this sore loser law that says that Luther Strange or Mo Brooks couldn't be the person. Right. Who could Can't be the again. person I to really run again? And is it, is, are they that red of a state to still put someone in there who didn't even get the, the nomination? The, the only person who could win a, uh, a right in hands down doesn't want to leave his job as attorney general. That was so, the administration. So, right, right. So right. he couldn't step down now and one of these other Republicans well, he, replace him on the ballot? He could. No, well, no, he couldn't be on the ballot. No, no they cannot so physically he, change the ballot if he steps down. All right, and so, if he is elected, uh -huh. the Senate must seat him because the Supreme Court has ruled that there's only two requirements after being elected. One is that you're 30 years old, these are in the Constitution, and the other is that you're from the state that uh, elected you. They can't add another requirement that you have a pure uh, background. They lost Ted Cruz. I mean, you lost Ted well, Cruz. Well, politically, it's a disaster. There's, there's, there's nobody on his side right now. Correct. Especially after this last accuser comes out. And there's also uh, terms that locals claim that Moore used to hang out at malls flirting with teen girls. And, and may have been banned from a mall while he was a public official, while he was the attorney general. I mean, the stuff is horrific, and it's beginning to be, if I may, sound more credible than his denials. Here's the second problem confronting the Senate. They want to expel somebody, they need a two-thirds vote. They need 16 Democrats that go along with it. Now the burden is on the Democrats. Do they want this damaged Republican in there that the other Republicans won't even talk to? Or they want the Republican governor to put Luther Strange back in there? So Second problem with respect to expulsion is no one has ever been expelled from the Congress because of something they did before they were in office, but only while they were in office. 1862, for treason against the United States when they supported the Confederacy. Ultimately, what do you think will happen? I think the Democrat is going to win. I know that a lot of people don't want to hear that, but that's what I think is going to happen. Let's talk about another Democrat uh, senator from uh, the state you and I live in, Menendez uh, in New Jersey. Trial jurors say they are deadlocked. The judge said, go, go home, uh, sleep on it, come back, try to do something. This judge is a former colleague of mine. He's a very bright guy. Uh, Yale Law School, but he has created a mess. Why? 
by stopping the trial at 3.30 every day and not sitting on Fridays. He extended it longer than it had to be, knowing that he had promised this juror that she could go on her Amazing. vacation in the middle of November. Knowing that once she was free... The juror who thought he was innocent. Correct. Knowing that once she was freed from the constraints of the trial, she'd start talking to the press about everything that went on in the jury room. This is ripe for a mistrial. I don't know if Bob Menendez is innocent or guilty, but I suggest to you that it's wrong for the government to have to try him again. And that's probably what's going to happen right. because the judge dropped the ball. And if he is found guilty, will it be the governor-elect that decides? Yes. Not the city yes, governor. Yes, because again, he can only be expelled for two, by a two-thirds mm -hmm. vote, and Chuck Schumer could delay that vote until Phil Murphy is the governor rather than Governor Christie who's in there. Does the judge have a history of doing this kind of thing? Uh, I'd rather not answer. Well, Let's just I say the judge, is, the judge is an outlier. He right. does his own thing okay. his own way. Right, well, judge, you guys I... want to have lunch. <laughs> judge, I wish there was something we could have talked to you about today. Yeah, <laughs> so nice Thank you very much. All right. Pleasure, guys. All right.